hot in here, Grandpa. I just don't want to work anymore. That's too damn bad! So what we're doing here is a fluid uh, circulation on this thing. I got four quarts of Honda. It came in a Puma shoe box. Uh, four quarts. <laughs> That's how it came. HCF2. I think that's correct. Let me look it up and make sure that's right. It's been a while since I looked it up, but I'm pretty sure this is your fill. Or not your fill, but your uh, uh, level check. And then this is your drain down here. So let me research this real quick on the YouTubes, on the internets, and I'll get back to you. All right, I watched like four or five different people do this. And it still leaves me with a lot of questions. <laughs> so... Everybody that I've watched did this. Of course, you crack your uh, level plug first, and they also called that the fill plug um, to make sure that it's going to come loose. Then crack that, drain it, put it back. Well, clean the drain plug because it has a magnet on it and there will be metal on it. Clean that, put it back in, and then they filled it through this hole. And then they filled it until it ran out, put it in, then they got in, shifted the gears, and most people were like, oh, we're done. And one other guy was like, then he pulled the plug again, checked it, it was low, added a little bit more. I feel like that's right. But the error for me is what temperature is the fluid when they're doing this? Because if your fluid's hot, then it expands. So that's not telling me exactly how much fluid I'm supposed to whatever i mean obviously the fluid's cold because they just put new in and then my next question is let me drop the car down because i want to show you something i'm going to do this the way they did it just because i don't see any other people doing it this way but obviously they also have an air box and stuff in here and i don't okay i got a, a cold air intake for more horsepowers right here on top of the transmission is a let me get focused in on this a rubber plug right there on top of the transmission why can you not just fill it up right there huh riddle me this bat man now I'm only gonna fill it on the side just because everybody else did I don't feel that it's any different but to me that's a transmission fill port okay so if you want to do it that way I'm not, I'm not seeing anybody else doing it that way but if you want to not have to Reach a fun I'm going to use a hand pump and pump it in, but if you don't want to have to get a funnel and a tube and stuff down through there, that would be a lot easier right there. Just saying. Now, if you're Honda Fit, if it's a CVT, and it has a slight shutter under light acceleration, from what I'm reading, this is the fix for that. You want to change your fluid pretty much every 30,000 miles. This has 90,000 on it, so it should be on its third fluid change. I have a feeling it's never been changed. I'm not a rocket scientist, but I do believe I'm correct. So anyways, crack your fill plug first. Then, oh yeah, and I was questioning the, the fluid I got. It, it does say right here on the transmission, HCF2, and that is what we got four quarts of in a Puma box. Our fill plug is a 17 from what I was seeing, and they're correct. And it broke free very easily. Now, everybody's saying replace the crush washers. Now, it's a simple thing to do, but I didn't get them. Okay? So, I'm going to reuse them. They're aluminum. They will crush again. I'm just saying. And then this one is just a 3 8 fitting. So, you take your socket off then that you just used. Oh, well, you're going to reuse that. Put your 3 8 in there. Oh, you can almost hear it slide in. Yeah, you hear it? Okay. There you go. Oh, I'm standing on the skip plate and I about took a ride. Now, I have a feeling, let me get my light out because I have a feeling this fluid, everybody I watched do it, their fluid was gold or a darkish gold. Darkish gold is, yes, you need to change it. It should be a clear yellowish. Well, it's already dripping. Let's see. It's not horrible. But let's let's get this out and see what it looks like. I've been driving this thing today, so it is. Well, that does look dark. 
All right, let's see what this fluid looks like. It's probably gonna shoot out past my pan. Meh. I bet you that's been changed at least once. At least. It's splashing me. Ah, it's making a mess. Oh my goodness. Oh. Come on. It's hot too. So anyways, um, yeah, it's going to drain out for a little while. This is going to make a mess because I don't have that up far enough. I'm reusing that aluminum washer because, because, and there you can see there's metal on that too as well. Not a lot. It's just fine shavings. So we're going to clean this up. I'm going to get this drained out. This stuff stinks. And then we'll start filling it back up again. Now, I thought it was like real smart, and I was like, oh, I'm going to do the rotors now while this is draining. I left them in the back seat of the car. Guess I'll get them after I'm done here. Yeah, I guess so. I'm on about my third 80s song right now, and she's still draining strong, okay? I don't know when it's going to slow down. I mean, it is kind of slow now, but I'm going to wait a little bit longer. All right, it finally slowed to a dribble. All right, I'm going to put the drain plug in, and then we're going to start filling it up. Right, so we filled her up until she was overflowing just like your m oh look it, it is the fourth of july i was being festive look at that so what we're going to do now we're going to start it on the lift and i'm going to row it through the gears so we're going to go reverse and leave it in for like a good five to ten seconds and we'll go to neutral same thing then we'll go to drive and we're gonna do this a couple times now I don't know that you really need to go to, to the sport speed mode and then ludicrous speed that's what that uh, sport sport and ludicrous mode okay yeah let's let's go ahead and shift into those too you know just because they're there Also smart this time, I took my rotors out of the back seat. Yeah. All right, here we are back at her. Let's see where we're at. Is she gonna run out? Negative. All right. Let's add some fluid. I don't really, I mean, I understand CVTs, but I don't quite know how they work exactly. It's just gonna say that most transmissions, when you check the fluid level, you check it while it's running. So that's why I'm like, eh, I don't know about this whole procedure that people were doing like this, but whatever. I don't think it's going to take much more. We don't really have a lot more, so it's going to take what we give it. I think it's starting to run out now. We just ran out too. Like, it's right at the bottom of the pool. I'm gonna I'm add, add this. What's left? This, that'd be four quarts all together. I still don't like that it ain't running out. Let me see if I can get a little more. I mean, from what they were doing, it was they were stopping after that. So, I mean, maybe I'm overdoing it. 
I don't know. Oh, there it is. It's running out now. Ah! I did it. It took four quarts. Pretty much exactly. Now we are going to tighten it. Good and tight. There go down on your... I know. There's probably a torque on that. All right. It's good. Now the rotors we got from none other than my friends over at Rock Auto. And I would love to promote for them. But they don't know anything about me. I got stickers all over my lift. Come on, Rock Auto! Oh, these look like they're in, they were treated with love and care. So I can tell by the packaging. I didn't go with the top of the line here, being that this is a Honda Fit. So yeah, just regular rotors here. When you hit your brakes, if you get a pulse, which this thing gets a pulse, and it gets them pretty quickly. As they get heated up, they get worse. Like when I'm driving over mountains and stuff, they get really bad on this thing. And on my way to work, I drive over mountains. Now, I don't typically drive this Honda to work, uh, but when I do, I get the shakes. Even though I'm trying to sell it, I might as well just go ahead and put them on there. So, I looked them up and they were only like 35 bucks for the set. So I was like, no brainer. What I'm saying by a shimmy, now, to tell, it, I'm saying it's my front brakes because when I get it, my steering wheel shimmies. Now that's telling you the front rotors are warped. I'm not saying the back ones aren't warped. Well, I can, I can tell you right now the back rotors are not warped on this thing because it doesn't have rotors. It has drums and not like beating a drum, okay? It has the old style brakes where you have shoes on the inside of a drum that push out on it. They can warp as well. I don't know how we resurface stuff like, like drums. You probably just buy new ones. On this thing, I'm sure the drums are fairly cheap. But I don't think the drums are warped. I could be wrong. I've been wrong before. I'm human. So let's get this first one off here. Now if you remember, I painted the brakes so they look pretty. Uh, but that rotor, you can tell it's not very pretty. Um, I was hoping that they would clean off. They were rusty when I got it. You know, normally you drive a little bit, cleans rust off, they're good. These never got good, okay? They got worse. So, let's do this. that for a speed run all right so i'm gonna take this thing out i guess i'll take you guys with me it might still hiccup here and there it needs to get that fluid circulating through it probably already did but we'll find out i'm gonna drive it tomorrow too so i can really update you after i drive it tomorrow because i'm gonna be like go an actual distance and then come back and i'm sweaty it's hot in here why do you guys make me work all right so things i can tell you as of right now the brakes are are fixed the pulse i was getting with the brakes is gone thank god um i have not felt the stutter yet it was always under light acceleration it was almost like it didn't know what gear to go into as of right now it's 100 percent better and yes i do have a tire pressure light on because i don't have any sensors in this thing if you remember right um this thing would I mean it was really doing it really bad this this evening when I was driving it before I did the service so I would think I'd be able to feel it by now but like it was on uphills or just light acceleration it would just 
it almost felt like it had a misfire, and that's that's the shutter. Yeah, you know, it's pretty smooth. Pretty dang smooth. That's probably all this thing needed. All right, so we got the Murano back in here. I'm going to try my best to get some stuff done. To get, okay, I thought, thought I had stuff on my face. One thing I need to fix on this thing, and I tried to fix it, but there's an inner brace. Let me flip the camera around. There's an inner brace inside the camera, or yeah, inside the camera, inside the fender here, and that holds this fender in, okay? And it's originally, like, glued there. Let me look at this. We'll show you this side. It's originally glued there with, like, a foam, something like that. Um, I tried to redo it, and it came loose again. I almost need to get this pulled out right here. This is steel. So, another thing I thought of was just cleaning that all out in there and um, using my spot welder and just spot welding it to that bracket. Now... The only problem with that is, with that glue being on, that foam being on there, it gives it a little bit of space. So, the headlight hooks on this thing, and it keeps this fender in against the headlight. So, I'm going to mess with this a little bit. I might get my dent puller out. I'm going to try to pull some of these dents out. you got to grind it down to do any body work. I'm not a PDR guy. Um, and, did I already, yeah, there's an inner layer to this fender that bracket that same bracket goes along the inside of here so you can't even get in between those two pieces to get that and that's why that's like that this is glued back here it bent it out so we're just going to try to pull that out i think that's bent at the top yep it's supposed to be a nice dome and we got a nice little flip here now i can hammer some of this out um, I already knocked it down some and it wrinkled right here. So I need to get my hammers out my hammer dolly just tap around on that a little bit Can't get No, nope, there's a bracket behind this one, too So I'm gonna have to pull this from the outside So let me circle my area so I know where I need to grind the paint off and also see another dent right here Another thing we need to do too is address the rust in between the door seams down here. So the only way you can really see it is to have both doors open, which sucks. There's only like one spot and it's right here on both sides. Um, pull this trim out and as you can see, it's bubbled and rusted. Now I'm not gonna go like crazy on this. If I have to weld a piece of metal in, I will. But I'm not repainting all this with, you know, clear and all that. It's going to get black spray paint or black enamel uh, to cover it up. So we'll have to get this trim off here. There's a lot. What I noticed on mine, too, is uh, cinders and salt and stuff gets trapped in behind this lip here, this seal. And then it just sits there and rubs the paint. And that's what happened right there. Um, like I said, it's... It's fine the whole way back and underneath the vehicle is even fine so I just don't want to get worse for the next owner oh the transmission on the Honda okay I put 20 miles on it today probably 22 something like that it fixed it 95% I'm gonna say I had I felt one stutter just one the whole time I drew it and it was way way worse so that is Fixing the issue another thing I did since it has a cold air intake on it. It's sucking more air and stuff in I'm just I'm worried that the injectors are a little bit clogged now. I already ran uh, an injector cleaner through it and um, I, I got a lean code before I have not got that code back It has not come back, but I'm wondering if the injectors might still not be a little bit clogged So I just filled it with more fuel injector cleaner can't hurt so we're going to run that through it. But like I said, I only had one hiccup the whole time I drove it, which is 10 times better than it was. Because if you're getting a stutter in your transmission or in your Honda Fit, then change out your fluid. Uh, it probably would not hurt to do it again on the next oil change. Now, it's a little pricey. That fluid, I think I had 60 bucks in four quarts. 
but if it fixes your issue, it fixes your issue. So it's not hurtful. And, and honestly, looking at the fluid coming out, I would have never guessed that that would have fixed it. I was guessing after seeing that fluid, I was thinking this isn't, isn't going to fix the issue. And it really did. It, it improved it a lot. On the downside of doing that, that fluid stinks, and that's what my garage smells like right now. That's all I can smell is that CVT fluid. It's it's a totally different smell. It's not gear oil. It's more like chlorine mixed with some some sort of soap. I don't I don't know. It, it's, it's it's a weird smell. I don't like it. it just be me. I emit some weird smells sometimes. So yes, that took me way longer than uh, I anticipated, but it's really nice when you finally figure out how to use a tool that you've had forever. There's sometimes I can not get this to stick to certain things. And this was one of them. Uh, it's a steel fender, but I was having a heck of a time. Now, one thing you want to do is grind it with a low grit sandpaper to put swirls and, and deep scratches in it because this does not weld itself to the fender it actually melts the metal around it and kind of makes a bond uh, between the tip of that and the metal around it and that's why it it sticks to it but then it also releases but I've all, I just recently figured out now I noticed it wasn't working at first on either part of this fender and I noticed the more I worked on that the more it started to stick well and when I put my hand over the metal it was warm and that was because this was heating up the metal from me constantly going around it so I thought I tried several times on this section and then it started to bond a little bit better and I was like maybe there's something to this and maybe it's the heat so I got out my torch I heated that section and then it stuck really well uh, to the point where I could really shape this now. I left it dipped in a little I'd actually had it domed out some and I might still have Right here. I think it's domed out a little bit You don't want to have high spots because you can't fill high spots. You gotta tap them down So might have to do putty work see if we have high spots and then work from there But there's definitely gonna need a lot less putty now this one I got tapped out pretty well without using the machine this one is pretty well because of the machine. And then this one I tap down without the machine. There's a little bit of a bump there. I think I might have to hit down. And that's where these different hammers come in. Where's that? Yeah, right here. It's better to have a low spot than a high spot, okay? You can't fill a high spot. So, maybe a couple more. Little taps here. A little, little, give it a little tappy tappy. Anyways, it's freaking hot. 
And this is 4th of July weekend, so I'm going to hang out with some friends. Uh, we're going to be setting off some fireworks and stuff, and we'll come back tomorrow. And I'll start putting some putty in these. Also, another thing I did. I normally don't do this, but I scuff the area around. The, like, you're going to scuff them anyway, eventually. When you put putty over that, um, you're going to sand off pretty much all of the putty except for that main area where you ground the paint off. Um, you're not supposed to putty over paint, but also if I wouldn't have scuffed this around here and there is putty out here with, with my blending and stuff, uh, it definitely wouldn't stick. So that's why I I took the, the sander, the DA then, and went around all these areas and roughed the paint. It's not going to bond perfectly but you're also not going to leave hardly any putty in those areas so if, if there is some left it'll bond a little bit all right let's go america all right so this fender's all we're going to get done for now so i'm going to get the putty out slap some on there and then we're going to start smoothing it out and then maybe we'll slap some uh primer on top of that i think i do have black primer um you like if you're doing darker colors like this um and I'm probably going to put sealer on there, so the primer really doesn't matter. The color, you could use gray. But, um, don't know if I'll get sealer up here. I definitely will seal it down here. But up here, we're going to have, we're going to be close to where we're going to blend at. So, I don't know if I'll get sealer up there. Because if you spray the sealer up here, and then you blend it, and by chance, some of your sealer landed over here. You're gonna notice that. So, all right, let's let's do it. Now we still have some sand in the go. I want to hand sand some of this stuff. Totally forgot about bonding the end of this fender to the bracket behind it, and it needs to be done. So I tried spot welding it, which was not successful. It did not stick. So I put panel bond on it. Thankfully had some left. That stuff, that, a little 50 milliliter tube, okay? I just ordered another one because this was my last tube. Where'd it go? Right here. Okay, you see all the bigger this is? Doesn't go very far, does it? $41. And it only comes with one tip. I have a couple extras, thank God. But $41 for that little, little tube. It's time to start finding alternatives. Anybody know anything else that works just as good as panel bond? But we're going to have to leave that until next episode to set up. So I'm not going to be able to finish this body work over here. But I can finish this stuff here and prime this stuff. So uh, I have one high spot there. I could probably tap that down a little bit. And then I did tap this one down so it's indented. So it's going to need more filler in there. But for now, we're just going to leave that alone with a couple more taps. Maybe a couple more. Okay, uh, maybe some more. <laughs> yeah! Alright, I got it knocked down now.
Now I can put putty right over top of that too. That's not going to hurt. I got to sand this some more. I'm going to block sand this. I can feel this edge right here. And you can also see where my grind marks were. So this should be sanded back to the grind marks. And then here I went past it so I can feel a dip plus the edge of that. So we're going to need some more right here. This one feels pretty good we might i can feel this edge but we need to sand it back some more so i'm going to block sand this and see where i'm at before i decide to add more to that and that honestly feels really good i don't know if i, I might hit this with the block sander for a second but this this actually feels pretty good up here Right, fellas you got a bonus I was like I looked back and I was like I gotta do that sometime honestly did not really need a apply primer here but since I burnt down through the paint actually this was just scratches down into the paint down to the primer right here so I sanded those out you couldn't feel them but I still I had a little primer there kind of builds it up a little bit then come back to here built this up uh, put a ground out the rust that was there from it being bare metal it's part it i don't know if that was part of this accident i think that might have already been there there's also scratches on the bumper we're leaving them be i don't i don't want to blend onto the bumper there's really no clear spot where you could like you'd have a crisp line right here or something like that i'm gonna try to buff these scratches so they'll be less see like like less visible but there's a really deep scratch and it's a black it's black plastic under a black bumper right there i am going to build up some paint right there and i will buff it but that's that's down to bare plastic right there so there's really nothing i can do about that unless i'm gonna sand it and repaint it but then 
you basically would want to clear the whole bumper after that. And I, I really, I really don't want to have to do that. This thing's not going to be perfect when it's done. It's got a dent in the passenger or the driver's rear door. Uh, it's got one small itty bitty door ding on the uh, front passenger door right here. So, I mean, yeah, it's good. It's going to look good. It's going to look good, folks. And then I did this. This is done here. This is done here. It all feels wonderful. I had problems with my primer this time. I've never, never had a problem with this Transstar primer, but for some reason I got little pinholes in it. After I sanded it, then I noticed the pinholes, and I had to keep sanding down until I got rid of them. You can still see little specks where the pinholes were, but I can't feel them now. There you go. Little speckles. They were all pinholes until I sanded it down far enough. No use in continuing on the body work here. We're going to have to do some putty work out here. That'll be next episode. We'll get that finished. And then I got to get those rust spots. And then we're on to paint. And uh, uh, it's, it's been a long time coming. You don't know how long this car's actually been here. My videos made it seem like it hasn't been here that long, but it's been here for two to three months, okay, now. So it's taken up a lot of my time. I need to get it done now. But that's going to be the end of this video. So if you like this video, smash that like button. Consider subscribing. Hit that dislike button if your mom's got some bumps and dents and bruises, but she still runs good. We'll see you on the next episode of Unwrapped. Coons get an extra little snack in the evening because they're growing boys he's eating. Did you eat yours already? He's the big boy. He will eat anything and everything. Stu Man stands guard on him while he's eating. Hey, Stu Man. Huh? Yeah. Stella. We got new toys. Oh my. I'm gonna say bye bye. Hmm? Do I say bye-bye?